to paint a door. First of all, decent brushes and work from a paint kettle, don't work from the tin. This is full, about one third, so when you dip your brush in and load it up, load it up on the first one as they've been working with it for ages, so it's not sparse on the first one. But you dip it in, literally, dab dab on the sides, and that is exactly the right amount of paint you need to use. If you work from a tin, being lazy, you tend to dip it in, wipe it on the sides, and all that happens is the paint will just work its way up the bristles, onto here, and all up your hand and get really messy. So work from paint kettle, dip in, dab on the sides, and it's fully loaded. And after a while, you don't even need to look, you can just do that automatically. I'm using two brushes. This brush did all of the edges on the doors. There was 18 to do, so it's quicker to go around all the edges with this one. And it goes down really nicely and wraps around the corners without making what's known as a fat edge along there. Whereas if you use a flat brush on edges, it tends to bend around the corner and you get a big fat edge. So I whipped round, did all the doors with that one first of all. And now I can actually paint the door. So I've got my paint kettle, hold it like that, okay? And then work in a set sequence. So I'll do the panels first of all. So I'll do this inner panel. These doors were varnished when I started, just a horrible orangey colour varnish which I've primed and undercoated, and now I'm top coating. The underneath coat is exactly the same colour, it gets two top coats to give it a beautiful finish. And I work in a set order, top first, then the right side. All the way down. And I've just finished there, so you start in a dry area, slap it all on, but then go from where you've just done, back into the previous one, and lift out to wipe out any brush marks. And again, right the way down to the bottom. Pushing it into the corner, not starting in the corner, because then you get too much paint build up in that corner. Okay, just lay it out that way, over to the left hand side. Same thing, all the way down, slap it on. This one, nice and angled, does that angle there beautifully. Oh, nice. Okay, into a dry area, slap it on. Lay it back up, run into that last corner. I'm working fast because this is water-based paint and it does dry quickly. And you have to do what's called maintaining the wet edge, that's keeping it wet and live. So whenever you do a new brush stroke with wet paint, you can join it in. Okay, now I'll fill in the section. Okay, I'm doing what's called cross-hatch, so you're slapping it on in all directions and then just lay off to get rid of brush marks. Go into a dry area, don't join in there. People often want to join in where they've just finished off, but it's all that does, as you can see, is put on too much paint. So you don't do that. You go into a dry area, slap it all on, so you get even coverage, and then go from this area that you've just done, back into the previous one, and lay off the brush marks. So that was section one. This is now section two. Now I'm gonna do section three. Okay, into the dry bit. Slap it on all over. From this one back into the previous one. So it's section three into section two and lift out, whoosh, like a little aeroplane taking off. So there's no brush marks there. Now I'll do this section, we'll call this one section four. Slap it on all over. Okay, a bit more, it's a bit sparse. So it's all over, nice and even. And then go from section four into three and lift out. Okay. There's a little dollop there, fill up my paint kettle. Okay, job done. Next panel, same thing, top section first. I'm not worried about these bits because they'll still be wet when I come back. So slap it on pretty fast, the right side. All the way down into that corner, push it into the corner so you don't get too much paint. If you'd started in the corner, you'd end up with a big well and it drips. So you start away from the corner and push it down. And then, bring those bits out. Okay, left side. The reason I'm making a bit of a mess there is because I'm making sure I get enough on that moulding. Otherwise it'd be a bit sparse there. And when I finish, I might have little ball patches all along my mouldings. Okay. And then the bottom. And by working in the same sequence every time, even if you're struggling to see where you've been because it's the same colour paint on top of the same colour paint, you'll be able to, you'll know where you've been just because of your sequences. But 
if you keep changing your sequences, you might think, what have I just done? Where have I been? So get a sequence and stick to it. I always like to do right to left. Okay, lay off. Okay, the panels are now done. Okay, now back to the top. I'll do this top section because I'm going to make brush marks sticking out there and to the right, which I need to be able to get rid of. And everything you do, you want to do it with the least amount of brush strokes and not keep fighting with yourself and repeatedly going over your work. So I'll just lay that off for a minute so I don't want the brush marks to dry out. Back to the right, down this side. Making sure I get a good amount on the mouldings. Get rid of that for a minute. Okay. And then, we'll go down here. Again, what can happen on the edges, if you get too much paint, it will curl around and you get a big fat edge on the inside of there, which you don't want. So make sure you get enough paint on that you've got even coverage, but not too much, that it bled around the corner and made a big fat edge, because that's ugly. Okay. Okay, push it down to the edge. When you're putting your paint on, you can go in all directions. It's just that final laying off is always from the bit you've just done upwards into the previous one and lift out, like a little aeroplane taken off. Okay, over to the right, down the moulding. Now I've got the door wedged open slightly so I can come off the edge without touching that door. Now another way to avoid getting edges, like fat edge, is to do herringbone all the way down to make sure you've got it to the edge. Now as I'm laying off, I'm actually gently, I'm exaggerating here, but coming off the door so you can avoid getting a fat edge. If I just drag down in a straight line, if I'm actually dragging inwards, I'll end up curling paint around the edge and getting a fat edge. I haven't got one, because my fingers nearly dry. Okay, so it's kind of herringbone. A bit exaggerated, so you can see what I'm doing, and then lay off. Okay, this section. Because I'm now going to make brush marks sticking out that way and that way. That's why I didn't continue this down, because I'd come back and do this, make a mess, and I'd have to do that all over again. So everything you do, you do in an order to minimise the amount of brush strokes and repeatedly going over your work. Okay, just get rid of those for a minute. Back to this side, because this has had a bit longer to be drying off now, so I've got to keep it live and come back to it. Woohoo! No time to hang around. Whew. Okay. Push it to the edge. So it's a good coverage, but not too much that it bleeds around the corner. Okay, and then lay off from the area I've just done into the previous one. So that way I'm only ever doing my current section and the section before. I'm not repeatedly going up to the top and coming all the way down to get rid of brush marks. Back over here. Same thing, kind of herringbone to come off the edges. A bit of in the paint. Like I said, even as I'm laying off, I'm gently coming off. That's exaggerated, but I'm actually more like that to avoid that fat edge. And if you do get one, just wipe it off with your finger. Wipe it on your clothes. Another reason why I wear comfortable clothes is so I can bend. I don't like wearing overalls because they're not comfortable. And as you can see, I sit like a little frog. So I can actually see what I'm doing is always at eye level. So that way I get the same even coverage. And this brush is angled, so it's the natural angle of your hand. If you had a square edge brush, like they normally are, your hand is like that, it's kind of uh, cranked around at a really awkward angle. This one's natural angle, and the, the bristles are flush with the door. So it's quite a nice, comfortable movement. So you don't get repetitive strain injury. Okay, now for the bottom. Okay. 
all the way to the bottom, make sure you get good coverage, that it's not sparse along the edge. And again, as you've noticed, I didn't finish that all the way down, because again, I'm going to make brush marks, and then I have to go over it for a second time. So you're wasting time. Now, those brush marks, I can get rid of them. Okay, again, get right into that corner. Don't be mingy. Okay. And then, just lay off. Nicely. Okay. And my last little bit, just here. Then, see what I'm doing. I'm coming off. Making sure I've got good coverage. Okay. Okay. And then, we have one beautifully painted door. Job done.